I want to pick your brain about connection. What is connection, or I guess disconnection? Yeah. Um, why is it important to be connected? What's going on, guys? Coach Matt and you go pro baseball. I'm here with the man, Josh Cathcart. I uh, flew to Texas what, about two years uh, yeah, ago. Yeah, man. Wow. J just starting out. And uh, now he's here in Florida. <laughs> and we're going to talk some hitting. Specifically in this video, I want to pick your brain about connection. What is connection, or I guess disconnection? Yeah. Um, why is it important to be connected? And maybe some hitting drills to kind of fix guys who have a disconnected swing. All right. What do you got? Man, connect. so connection is basically when you hear long versus short. You hear people talk about, hey, this kid's got a long swing, or hey, this player has a short swing. And connecting, as the word says, is basically the, the backside of the body connecting together as we turn. So right now, I, this would be connected or stacked where my hand, my hip, my back knee, my shoulder, and all this is in line. Disconnection is when you see those players that get here, and as they start, everything starts to work out away from them. They're disconnecting from their body and getting long. You lose bat speed. That's the number one thing. And when you lose bat speed, you're also losing barrel control. Um, when we have a tight connected turn, the barrel should be in control. And that top hand is what you really want to look for. If I'm coming through here and this barrel gets back below my top hand, I'm becoming disconnected on the backside. If I'm coming here and I'm pushing this arm out and I'm losing this angle between the bicep and the forearm, this is gonna get me long and disconnected. I wanna be able to hold that angle and then connect. People will hear about connecting the barrel to the shoulder. This is one of those that we really need to talk about. When you don't wanna just come in and drop the barrel down. It's not this move, right? If I'm doing that, I'm actually losing uh, power in my swing because I'm losing any stretch, any tension that I had created. Okay, so it's not just come in and drop this down. It, you're going to have to turn, and as you turn, everything works into connection. Um, and dealing with that with young players, you know, people ask all the time, why is my kid swinging and missing so much? Why is my kid not hitting the ball with power? Generally speaking, they're not using their legs properly. They get too handsy or armsy and the disconnection happens and so everything else slows down. Um, so in a nutshell, that's, that's what it is. Holding the angles and not losing the barrel behind or below the hand or outside the hand early. We talked about it too in the, uh, one of the previous videos about guys, younger guys who are more rotational just because they, they don't have the muscles or, or the- They feel uh, stronger. Yeah, yeah, to get it done. The way I like to think about it too is like almost if I had a uh, flag, like a flagpole with a flag. If I'm running this way, that flagpole should, or the flag should be going that way, right? Same thing with the hitters. If they're flying open, pulling this way, their flagpole, their arm, their bat is mm -hmm. gonna be getting away from their body, getting disconnected. So I, I feel like a lot of younger players have that issue because they're flying open, spinning out. The other reason, I 100% agreement there, and the other thing is one of these verbal cues that has been around since the beginning of baseball time, take your hands to the ball. I understand in theory, but it has to be taught right. Because if you tell a young player to take their hands to the ball, they literally take their hands to the ball, and then the swing becomes either really down or they have to get back up out of the way of it, okay? And so directionally, one of the videos that we've just shot was about direction, that knob in my hands are going to have to go in the direction of the baseball, but they're not just gonna keep going, keep going. This was now disconnected, where if I'm right here and I'm turning, my hands are going that way, but I'm turning to the inside and I can deliver the barrel properly. That's so great. That's, that makes so much sense when you say it like that. And that's what I love about when you're explaining stuff. You make it so simple and easy to understand. If you can take some of these high level concepts and break it down so um, 
easy to understand for especially like the younger kids oh. like that they need to understand what you're talking about yeah, you know and that's one of the things that i'll have them do you know i ask certain questions you have to ask because there's these catchphrases that you know i heard when i was growing up i'm sure you did you know squish the bug throw your hands that type of thing Stay take your hands the to the ball you know all of that and so i'll tell them you know a young kid that comes in all right bub get get ready we're going to get you into launch position i want you to take your hands to the ball and they go, and I'm like, okay, now tell me how you expect to get the barrel there in a power position. And they're like, trying to figure it out. And oh, okay. So my knob direction needs to be there, but I have to stay inside the ball. That makes a lot of sense. Casey Smith out front hitting, he talks about that a lot, uh, defining what the terminology is, what the, the cues that you use as a coach define what those mean so that when you say take your hands to the ball you are both on the on same, same page, page versus the hitters thinking one yeah. thing versus the other and, and there and there are kids i do work with kids that over time we have developed kind of that lingo and some of them i'll be like hey man hands to the ball you know if i've got somebody that's really pulling across the body or something we may use that to get them back on track but to take it and say it without a you know a clear explanation to a young player, you can cause a whole lot of problems. But getting connected, I would say, is, is right up there with um, problems in the lower half. Lower half issues is always where problems start. But if you have a base that is pretty good, you can still manage to get loose up top and get disconnected. So That makes sense. We did a video on connection ball drills. And mm -hmm. the connection ball is a great tool to stay connected. I didn't bring one out today, but I'll leave a link to that video below. Really great information. But I want three more connection drills. Just co just connection drills. Yeah. yeah, the connection balls are great. Um, so for this, I, this is feel. Uh, this is 100% feel. Uh, we don't have any bungees out here today. I do one uh, from a wall with a bungee cord that I call turn to slot. And it would just be basically the bungee here and you're turning and you're feeling that connection with the back elbow, you're feeling the connection here and getting in that stack position. Um, how I, sorry to interrupt no, you, how high are you? Are you up here with the bungee or down oh, here? Oh no, low. Low? Yeah, okay. low bungee. Um, so with this, we're gonna talk and just turn to slot here. Go ahead and just start them and launch. If you have a higher advanced player, you may wanna get them into rhythm and it would be more like this move where they come in, land, and then here. But for the young kids, go ahead and get them into launch. And what I like to have them think about, you always want to start with the hip. You have to start with the hip. Front heel's going to be up, so trigger and hip. But I like to think about knob and knee together. And if you had just, you can kind of, if you had a computer screen, you could draw it on here and kind of watch how that works. This is the position that we're checking for right here. We have this box set up, okay, I call it the connected box. And then you have the back side where that barrel is still above the hands, but not steep. You don't want to come in and have it here, because again, how am I going to get to the ball? I would have to scoop or I would have to slap down. So as we turn, the barrel starts to work back, connection there. I should feel like I have a lane with my chest and my body right at that ball and even the knob turn to slot or turn to connection and then from right here you can go ahead and hit and stay through it. Nice stroke coach. Yeah, that one, man, I'm telling you, these fungos, I like, I like the wood. I, I tell you what, the back, the back can't fix a 50 cent swing. You know? <laughs> this That's is, a swing right there coach, <laughs> that was all swing. So, all right, so we, we have that one. And then, you, again, I'm gonna use this T here. This is a backside barrier drill. And you're gonna have to get this up as high as you can. Now, you could do this up against a wall, and I use these wall, these barrier drills a whole lot. Um, but the back foot would go right up against that, okay? And then as we get into this, we wanna make sure that you're not hitting that wall or that T with that barrel coming out. So we should be able to turn through and again, connect on the backside. We don't want to lose the barrel back. You don't want to drop the hands and then scoop. Hands across the chest, John, is one of those things that I really like for this. 
Um, me being from the Houston area, um, it's something else that I picked up on from Bregman. I was just going to say, he talks about that. Yeah, all the time. hands across the chest. And now, granted, you have to understand, obviously, if the pitch is down, you're not going to take your hands across the chest. But every swing that we prepare to take as a hitter should always start with high connection. When the front foot hits, the move has to be here first. Now, from this point, once I get my hips open to home plate, my hands can go wherever I need them to go. But if I start getting here and when I land on the back side, my move is down, no good. We have to be able to connect high and that hands across the chest. But the backside barrier here and then just turn and make sure that that barrel is working between you and the tee or between you and the wall. So that's just a really, really nice warm up drill. Just get it all, get it all connected. Very good. What do you got for number and two? And then the last one. Oh, number three. Excuse three, me. yeah. Um, so for this, this is basically going to be a rear arm. Okay, people talk about just the rear arm ISO, and we have those ISO drills, but really feeling the forearm and bicep. Um, this is one of those, we were talking about Casey Smith earlier. Um, love that dude, everything he puts out. He talks about the forearm and bicep angle, being able to maintain that angle. If we start in, in our first move, that angle opens up, you're going to get disconnected and you're going to get long on the backside. We want to be able to turn down, show the bicep to the pitcher. And if we can get that feel right in there, we're connecting that backside, we're creating the barrel depth without creating the barrel dump. And that is key. Being able to stay here, maintain, as long as the barrel's above my hand, I have control. As soon as that barrel gets here, I've now lost control and I'm either going to scoop or I'm going to flip to get back. So the rear arm angle drill, just the forearm and bicep, just hold it, show the bicep to the pitcher. I love it. That makes a lot of sense. And when you were talking about that, it made me think of, I did a video about pitching a long time ago, probably four or five years ago. I called it load to unload. Okay. And it makes me think about when you were talking about all these different places that you could be disconnected. It's not just it's not just the hands away. You know, it could be this angle. It could be, you know, uh, coming away here. You know, so if you're trying to hit that ball, you want to be loaded. If you unload too early, then there's nothing to unload. There's so many similarities between pitching and hitting and boxing and hitting. Think about punching something or someone. You're not going to come out here and go this way. Number one, it's going to be slow and you're going to get hit, okay? But number two, you lose the control. You get out here and it's just kind of in space. Whereas if I'm right in here, I know exactly where that's going. And it's the exact same concept. If I get to this point and disconnect on the backside, I lose control of the barrel and so my miss hits are going to happen. Whereas if I can come right here, man, I can deliver this wherever I want. And even like if I did it out here and even try to do that with this one, like I, I understand that I don't have control over that right in here. 100%. That makes a lot of sense too. And that kind of goes back to the video we did before about directional hitting. Yeah, absolutely. Know, same thing with the boxing. Like yep. yeah, obviously you want to be going towards that where you're trying to go. If you're trying to box someone over here and you're coming out <laughs> and around, you know, it's a little tough. Yep. That makes a lot of sense. That's great. Guys, uh, go check that video out. That was a great one. Uh, we talked about directional hitting drills. Really great stuff. Josh broke it down better than I've ever heard it before. I'll leave a link to that video down below. Also, check out that connection ball video we did a couple years ago. A lot of great feedback. Yes, over the that years one was on that a good one. one. That was a really good yep. one. I'll leave that link down below as well. And go check out Josh on his website. He's got a ton of great stuff over there. He does camps all over the country. In fact, we're here in Florida, like I mentioned before. He's doing a hitting camp tomorrow. He may be coming to your neck of the woods soon, or if you want him to come to your neck of the woods soon, drop Give a comment me a call. down below. There you go. <laughs> and uh, check him out on the website. He's got a bunch of stuff. You can get video. Uh, analysis from him. He'll give you a little plan. He's got pre-built plans for older guys, more elite guys, uh, varsity guys. You yep. call the program varsity. varsity drill circuits. There you go. Yep. Um, a bunch of other stuff. What do you got? Tell us yep. everything you got. So we got the customized practice plans that go with the analysis. Yeah. So package. You can do one. You can do both. Um, obviously, you can't do a customized plan without the analysis, but you can do an analysis without the plan. Or, like you said, the the pre-built plans. Uh, we've got bat speed, separation connection um, 
and then the varsity drill circuit, and then the basic youth hitting program. And those you can just go directly to the website. They're 100 bucks. Buy them. I shoot it over to you. It comes in a PDF. It's got the YouTube links to all the drills, um, and then the guidelines for the plan. That's awesome stuff. I'll leave all the information down in the description below. Go check it out. Guys, I've got a five-year-old son, and when he turns nine-year-old, I'm going to fly him out to Texas. This is a guy that's going to get his hands on him yeah. uh, if he's still playing and still swinging. Man, he's got a little good good little swing off Hey, the... dude, he's got good genetics. Well, I'll tell you what, he's big as hell. I'll give him that. I'll give him that Fair much. <laughs> Thank you so much. We're going to make another video here soon, Yeah. and we'll see you in the next one. Good, good.